Welcome back to our series on cloud native application development. I am James Land, a senior consultant for application development at Red Hat, and on this video, we're going to talk about OWASP and Z Attack Proxy, or ZAP. OWASP, our Open Web Application Security Project, is a nonprofit foundation that focuses on software security through community led open source projects. More information about OWASP can be found at OWASP.org. The OWASP homepage has a ton of information. They've got a lot of spotlight stuff here on the main page. Um, they've also got the ability to both donate uh, if you would like to support them or join the OWASP um, foundation. Uh, they also have a list of events that they put on every year and there's information about how you can sign up for those. Uh, they have a list of chapters that are located throughout the world. Most of these chapters during normal times have weekly meetups. They'll do presentations that you can attend. Um, so even if you don't want to join the chapter, it's worth taking a look at uh, just to find uh, different um, presentations that you can usually attend for free. Sometimes they'll have local events, that sort of thing. Uh, and then they have this list of projects. Uh, these projects that you see here are going to be the OWASP flagship projects. So these are the ones um, that have been vetted and they think really contribute to uh, application security, but there's a lot of smaller projects uh, as well. There's some of these lab projects are still pretty big and there are a bunch of incubator projects and they get more projects every day. Uh, if you have a project that you're interested in submitting, uh, you can submit your project to OWASP and make it part of the OWASP foundation. Um, it just has to be security related and open source. Um, but there's a ton of stuff here. Uh, a lot of these projects are also looking for help. So if you click on any of them, um, they'll give you information about what the project is, the roadmap, getting involved. Uh, these tabs will differ from project to project, uh, as well as information about Slack channels that you can talk to people about and, and the leader of the project and that sort of thing. So for the next part of this video, we're going to talk mostly about Z Attack Proxy. Um, but we're also going to talk a little bit about Juice Shop, uh, and we're going to install both of these. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and flash on the screen uh, the installation paths or the installation URLs in case you don't have access to the lab of the two places I'm going to install these. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and install them yourself uh, or keep it running. I'm just going to talk a little bit about each of these real quick uh, so you can listen to that while they install. And just real quick, I just use the Linux installer for the Zap install. And I personally used the um, Docker image for the Juice Shop install, but you can install them however you'd like. Now, I'm going to start off by just talking a little bit about Juice Shop, what it is. Uh, so Juice Shop is a kind of a mock of a modern application. It's got uh, an Angular front end, a Node.js client back end, a SQLite database on the back. Um, uh, there's a couple other technologies that are in there. Uh, I think it's actually got a MongoDB in there somewhere. Um, but it's got a lot going on. And uh, what it's designed to do is actually teach you about how to detect and potentially fix um, these vulnerabilities. So what it is, is it's this modern application, and it actually has a ton of vulnerabilities in the application itself, including a vulnerability from all of the OWASP top 10 um, list. In fact, multiple vulnerabilities from almost every one of those OWASP top 10 lists. Uh, and it, it's pretty cool. Uh, there's actually a scoreboard that it uses to keep track of which vulnerabilities you found and fixed. Um, and it's, it's just a really, really useful tool. And you'll see that as we go along in this project. Uh, the other item that we're going to be looking at is the Z attack proxy. Uh, so Z attack proxy or zap is an application scanner. Uh, and this is a tool that's going to be used to help you detect these vulnerabilities. So we're going to be using this Z attack proxy against our known vulnerable application juice shop. Uh, and zap is what's known as a DAST, which is a dynamic application security testing tool. Uh, this means that it finds security flaws against a running version of your application. Um, so it's actually going to be hitting URLs and um, trying different attack methods in order to find your security flaws. Uh, this is kind of in comparison to a SAST, which is a static application security testing 
uh, tool, which is used to scan your source code. Uh, so this is stuff like check style or PMD or find bugs, which will actually look at your source code itself uh, to see if it can find issues with um, your security. So first thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start up Juice Shop. Um, you may have already done this, but I'm just going to click on this Docker image here. And we're going to do a run of our Juice Shop. I've already pulled it down. And I'm actually going to use Podman instead of Docker. And you should, once it's up and running, be able to hit it on localhost 3000. Yeah, we should see this OWASP juice shop. Great. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is start up our Z attack proxy. Once that's started up, you'll see this little pop up here that asks if you want to record the session. Uh, I'm going to say no. But generally speaking, you're going to want to say yes. Uh, this is just going to keep a record of all the different um, things that you scan. So you can look at them later and you can actually replay them. Uh, but for me, I'm just going to say no for here. Uh, so this is the Z Attack Proxy desktop app. Uh, there is a lot here. So uh, actually, real quick before I start, there's a ton here. If you right click in here, you can see all the different options you've got in each of these different frames. You can see there's a marketplace up here. Uh, the marketplace has a bunch of different uh, stuff you can do even outside of the base application that you can add on. There's th This uh, application does take a long time to learn, and I'm going to be doing a very, very high-level overview of it. Um, if you do want to learn more, uh, I would recommend checking out a set of videos that's all-day DevOps. Uh, you can just Google it. Um, so this is a set of video from All Day DevOps, and it's actually with Simon Bennett. He's the uh, lead for Zap. And even these are, are fairly high level, um, but there are a bunch of 10 minute videos um, that talk about the different things that you can do with Zap. And they go in a little bit more detail about all the different uh, specifics with Zap, and there's a bunch of them. Uh, so this is a really good resource if you actually wanna learn Zap. This is just gonna be uh, a pretty high level intro to show you what it can do. Um, so for us, the first thing that we're going to want to do is do an automated scan. Uh, this is just going to be a basic scan of our applications. We're going to put in localhost 3000 here, and you can either use a traditional spider, which is faster and just finds URLs and sort of crawls through URLs as you would think a traditional spider would do. Um, or you can use an Ajax spider. Ajax spider tends to work a little better with JavaScript stuff. It's actually clicking on buttons and running some of the JavaScript. Uh, we're just going to use a traditional spy, spider for speed. Um, and you can see what it does is it just goes through, it finds all the URLs that it can find. And then once it finds all those URLs, it's going to run uh, some, some basic attacks against them, some different things to try and find uh, issues with those URLs. And those are going to be popping up in this alert. So you can see it's already found, it's already found a handful of cross-domain misconfigurations and uh, some JavaScript source file inclusions. Uh, you can also take a look over here and see all the URLs that we found in here. Uh, you can see there's this FTP server, which is interesting. It'll put a little flag beside each of the ones they found issues with. Uh, and inside of this cross domain, inside of these alerts, you can dig down further. You can double click it, and then you'll get information about what is the issue what the evidence that it used to find the issue. So you can see here it's allowing access control to a wild card, which is generally not good. Um, you've got your web browser, or sorry, you've got your description information, some extra information, uh, general solution. Sometimes this can help you solve the problem if it's pretty simple. And then this URL to a reference uh, to an external source that you can use to find more information about your issue. Uh, you can also look at the request and the response of each of these different issues as you click through in the center area. So you can see exactly what you're sending and what you're receiving. Um, this is stuff is really great. Uh, this is, you know, this is a pretty basic scan. It didn't find a whole lot. There's no, no red flag issues. And as we know, 
uh, the thing that we're scanning should have a bunch of vulnerabilities in it. Um, we might have found a little bit more with Ajax Spider, but and we still wouldn't have found everything. Um, so one thing that this thing is built with, the Zap Attack Proxy, uh, is this Manual Explorer, and specifically it's got this new HUD feature. And what this does, and we're just going to click the launch browser, uh, launch browser here. So what this does is it gives you a really nice UI to go along with your browsing, and it lets you browse through your application as a user would browse through your application, which can make it um, easier to find these security vulnerabilities, and uh, it just it's it's a little bit more of a natural flow rather than having a spider crawl through and hit random URLs that it found. Uh, so we'll give this just a second to pop up. And you can see here, we've got this welcome to the Zap HUD. This is a, a pretty new functionality. Um, and actually I'm gonna reboot it real quick because my buttons aren't showing up here on the side. Give me one second. All right, there we go. So we can see uh, this welcome to Zap HUD. This is a pretty new functionality. Um, one thing I'm going to suggest right off the bat, you don't have to do it right now, but potentially after uh, this video, if you want to actually learn how to use the Zap HUD, the best way to do that is click Take HUD Tutorial. Um, so if you click this, it's going to open up a new tab, and it's got this really, really cool little uh, tutorial that will walk you through what everything does. So it'll, it'll tell you about all the specifics. Um, you can walk through everything one at a time, and it'll actually give you examples of what each of these buttons do, how to use them, what all of them mean. I'm not going to go through all of that because there's a lot here. Um, but the, the general thing that you want to keep in mind with all this stuff that's really cool is this is telling you everything that the desktop application is telling you. And in fact, the desktop application is still running. You can see our list of sites got a lot bigger based on my, my bookmarks. Um, but our desktop application is still running. Um, We've, there's WebSocket support. You can see that a bunch of WebSockets got hit once I started up the application. Um, but this is going to display most, if not all, of that information, um, but accessible directly from the browser with these overlay with these buttons on the side and the stuff on the bottom. So real quick, the bottom here, you've got your history. You've got WebSocket information, HTTP information. You can double-click any of these. You can see what the request and the response was. Uh, you can do an active scan against it, which will run the zap attacks and try and find issues with that particular HTTP uh, request. Um, can't do that right now. I'll explain why in a second. Uh, you have all these buttons on the side. Uh, the buttons on the left-hand side tend to be uh, page-related. Uh, so one thing that we're going to do right off the bat is we're going to click uh, Add to Scope. So we want this button to be red. And what that says is just this entire domain is now in the scope of uh, stuff we're testing um, so that we can actually run attacks against it. Uh, but these tend to be page related. These are a lot of the alerts. You can see we've already got a couple that have popped up. Uh, also click this one. This one's just going to enable pop-ups. Uh, and then on this side, this is site related. So you can see all of the different URLs we've hit, run our Ajax spiders if we want to. Uh, the one button we're going to click here is attack mode on. So we're going to turn on our attack mode, and uh, you can minimize this piece too. And that is just going to make it so whenever we click an endpoint, we're automatically going to have Zap run an attack against that endpoint and try and um, see if you can find vulnerabilities. Uh, so now that we've done all this stuff, let's see if we can find uh, a major vulnerability in OWASP Juice Shop. Uh, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to Account. And we're going to click Login. So uh, inside of here, we're going to click Not Yet a Customer, and we're going to fill out our customer information here. You can just put in whatever you'd like. Register. All right. Now, don't log in immediately. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to log in, but we're going to use uh, not the name that we just put in. So any invalid name. So I'm just going to use here, I'm going to use test at test dot test and whatever password you want. And when we log in here in just a second, you should see a high alert pop up right here. Uh, sometimes it takes, it takes a second and sometimes you have to do it twice. Uh, there we go. 
So the high alert popped up. Uh, now if we click that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we can see we got a SQL injection alert. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, and in fact, if we zip real bit quick back to our um, OWASP site, Injection is our number one security risk. So we found one. Yay. Um, so if we take a look here, we can click on it. We can click on this and we can see a bunch of information. Again, this is the same information we would see if we were looking at the desktop app, but just a little easier to get a hold of here. Uh, we can see the attack that they tried to use. Uh, they just used an or one equals one attack. And it tells us information about how they were able to successfully manipulate something using Boolean conditions. And it gives us a solution of don't trust client side input, even with client side validation and more references that we can click on and find out more information about SQL injection attacks and how to prepare for them and prevent them, et cetera. Um, but for our case, oh, one more, one more little piece I want to show you. If we click on this URL at the top too, it'll actually tell us what our request was, our email and our password. Uh, and in this case, they injected this and one equals one. And then what our response was, which was invalid. So we found a potential SQL injection attack. Um, now, before we take advantage of that attack, there's one more piece of functionality that I think is pretty cool and I want to show you. And that's going to be this breakpoint. Uh, so for now, click this breakpoint on, and then again, just put in a fake username and email or password. Uh, what's cool about this is when you turn that breakpoint on, it actually um, will stop at every HTTP request to and from and every WebSocket request and let us step through it. So you can see here it's hitting rest user who am I. I'm guessing that's just checking to see if we're already logged in. We can step, see what our response was, 304. Step. Uh, quick note, you might hit a WebSocket depending on your thing. If you do, just keep stepping through it. But we can see here, we've got a request to log in. And so here, just to show you that you can do it um, and that everything is modifiable, go ahead and just modify your email address and your um, password to be the email address and password that you created before. And then once you've done that, uh, just click continue. And you should see that you were able to successfully log on. So you were able to actually um, modify those, those uh, request responses, which is pretty useful for testing, even outside of security testing. It's kind of nice. Uh, so we're going to log out real quick. And for our final little piece here, we're actually just going to do our SQL injection attack. Now, in order to figure out this information, um, you can look up, uh, there's actually a really good guide to this. So if you go to poning.owasp-juice.shop, uh, or you just Google poning owasp juice shop on Google, um, you will find this page. And this is a guide written by uh, the creator of juice shop, whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce, uh, which will kind of walk you through how to do the different challenges, a lot of them at least, uh, in Juice Shop. And it does it in a pretty cool way of not just um, hand, spoon feeding you the answer, but kind of giving you hints and trying to help you walk through it. Uh, and it would tell you more about how I was able to figure out the SQL injection, uh, but that involves some tools outside of O um, or outside of uh, Z attack proxy. So we're not going to go over those in this video. Uh, but to actually do the SQL injection for fun, uh, what you're going to want to do is inside of email, you're going to type in single quote space or space one equals one and then dash dash and then put whatever you want in your password. And then when you log in, congratulations, you should now be admin at juice-sh.op, which makes you an administrative user. Um, you can do a bunch of new interesting things now. Uh, so at this point, we've kind of gone over the basic capabilities of what Zap can do. Uh, 
you now know where you can hunt down more information if Zap is something that interests you. Uh, we've also talked about uh, OWASP as an organization, uh, what they do, what they stand for. Uh, again, would recommend taking some time to look at those OWASP top 10. Uh, those are really good. It's just a really good list to, to be thinking about when you're devi- um, developing your application. And then we talked a little bit about the juice shop. Uh, which is a really cool and interesting learning tool. There's a lot of fun stuff to be done here. Um, Real quick, I'll even show you there's a scoreboard. Uh, I'll try to blank out the URL and post so because that's actually one of the challenges is finding the scoreboard. Um, But there's a bunch of challenges here. They rank from easy to very difficult at six stars. There's little tutorials that'll help you click through it. Uh, This is a lot of fun um, and a good way to learn security if you've never done it before Uh, or even if you have. uh, Some of these harder challenges I understand are pretty difficult. Um, But hopefully this will give you more of an insight into security and um, I hope that you think about it a little bit more before your next application design.